Ladies and gentlemen, AMD's Strix Point series of APUs are easily one of the more intriguing product launches scheduled for this year. As a brief reminder, these are APUs which will combine Zen 5 based cores and RDNA 3 hybrid workgroup processors into high performance chips. The Halo product, capable of offering performance enough to give discrete budget to mid range GPUs, a run for their money. Strix Point leverages both Zen 5 and Zen 5C, depending on the configuration. I'll get more into this in a moment. And naturally, for gamers who need high performance processors on a budget, it's going to be an excellent win for AMD. Now, in the past 24 or so hours, there's been a very interesting piece of official information from AMD themselves. Well, I say from AMD, they actually put it on GitHub uh, with patches, of course, for their drivers. I want to give credit to Kepler L2 on Twitter for initially discovering this. Now, anyway, as you can see here in the image, which again is from GitHub, we're looking at both GFX 1150 and GFX 1151 for Strix Point 1 and Halo products, respectively. Now, these are RDNA 3.5. Or, to put this another way, they are basically hybrid designs with RDNA 3 as a basis, but have some elements of RDNA 4 inside of them. Now, I have spoken about this several times in the past, but briefly, if you missed that, they will have some improvements, for example, better clock frequency, well, that's the rumor anyway, as well as improvements such as Salus from RDNA 4 being backported. Now, I also have some additional information from one of my sources regarding the specifications, so let's just briefly go over that as well. So we're going to start out with Strix Point 1, which of course is the lower end chimp. We have a single Zen 5 CCX and a Zen 5 CCX as well, so one of each. A single RDNA 3.5 shader engine, 16 megabytes of L3 cache for Zen 5 CCX, and an additional 8 megabytes of L3 cache on the Zen 5C CCX. As for the core counts, I'm told that Zen 5 is 4 cores, Zen 5C is 8 cores, and there's 8 workgroup processors, again based on RDNA 3.5. Clock frequencies. Well, it's still not final production silicon at the moment, but I'm told that the target is over 3 gigahertz, assuming there's enough power, of course. Obviously, this is going to be configurable, so if you're in a laptop and it's on battery, then obviously it's not going to be the same thing. If the cooler on the laptop is basically, you know, like a piece of styrofoam versus if it's a larger laptop design with, like, plugged into the power, you guys know the drill. You're smart enough to understand what I mean. Um, 65x AI engine tile, 20 PCIe based on Gen 4, DDR5 support for 6400 as well as LPR5X, that's a mouthful, 8533, um, 8, Jesus I can't speak today. The performance target, I have mid confidence about this, I've only had a single source, they are generally pretty accurate, however, Obviously, single sources can be wrong, but I'm told that the target is probably going to be around 14 T-flops, but that is dual issue. I want to stress, that is T-flops uh, FP32, but that is dual issue performance. Moving on to Sarlacc, which is the code name for the Halo Strix Point product, we have... 16 Zen 5 CC, uh, 16 Zen 5 uh, cores. They are split across two Zen 5 CCXs. That's 32 threads total, naturally. Um, each of those CCXs has 16 megabytes of L3. Um, so this is potentially unified with the GPU as well. So basically, this acts as the GPU's additional cache. 20 work group processors, or if you prefer, 40 compute units. 256-bit LPDDR5 support. As for the AI engine, now this has been the subject of a lot of different figures that I've heard. Early reports that I was getting were around 40 tops, however more recently it's over 50, and I'm basically hearing figures between 50 and 60. I don't know whether they've beefed them up, or whether it was just early prototypes, or what happened precisely. I'll try to fig figure out more about that, but honestly, I think for a lot of folks, they don't really care so much about the AI engine stuff anyway. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments if you feel differently and it's like one of the big selling points to you. I was also told that uh, internal benchmarks show this to be around the 7600 XTM in terms of performance. However, when it comes to benchmarks, I always have the really big asterisk 
that I don't know how it was tested specifically. So that could be across like a dozen different games at a specific resolution. It could just be, let's say, a creativity app. I don't know in this particular instance. So do take that with some level of salt, but I was told it is faster, at least in one or two benchmarks in the 7600 XTN. And the TDP is again configurable, but in this particular instance, it can go up to 120 watts. So there you have it guys. Honestly, Strix Point is going to be one of those products I suspect is gonna be really popular. Now, Intel also have their own variants for APUs, and I'll probably talk about them more in another video because that's a topic in and of itself. And honestly, Intel are working on some really cool stuff as well. Zen 5 naturally is also gonna launch this year, and there's a bunch of very exciting products from both uh, Intel and AMD, of course, we're expecting. I don't really actually think RTX 50 is going to launch this year. I don't know about that, but I was hearing a lot of mixed reports it was going to be Q4 this year, and some others were telling me that it was going to be Q1. But just recently, the murmurs I'm hearing really are starting to make me think that it's not going to be this year RTX 50 does launch for the desktop. I would love to be wrong on that. But I have a feeling NVIDIA are just not super in a rush. And if you look at the grander scheme of things in terms of product releases this year, I can kind of imagine a Q1 or Q2 scenario for NVIDIA next year just making more sense for RTX 50. Ultimately, let's say they were to release RTX 50. And let's even, let's just assume, just for the sake of this video, let's just, let's just hypothetically say that it was two times faster than the 4090 in pure raster performance. Let's just even say that it was hell it could be 10 times faster obviously that's not practically possible for a dozen different reasons but let's just assume that they could do it what benefit is there um and that really is what it comes down to i just don't see nvidia doing it because we know the battle mage performance targets are just not going to be enough to really upend the 1490 um we know amd they're not going to release like a product that's going to be faster than the 1490 anyway. So I just don't see a reason for it. I mean, maybe they would to keep pressure in the market. But um, I don't know. I'll, I'll be very interested. So I think this year is going to be a very itsy bitsy year for GeForce products from NVIDIA. And also another reason that I can see them waiting on RTX 50 is just to improve the software. Now, I'm not saying NVIDIA software is crap. I can just imagine, however, additional time to work on drivers, the ecosystem, that type of stuff. It could be really beneficial um, for NVIDIA. I've heard some really weird rumors for NVIDIA, and I'm just going to mention it here because I don't have a lot of faith in this information. So I'm just going to mention it as a quick FYI, but I would really not put much stock in this year. But I've had a couple of people tell me that NVIDIA are definitely working on stuff like having DLSS work across any game how that's going to work in terms of actually implementing it obviously amd have kind of done that with their own software at the moment there was a really big thing of them you know kind of working on this stuff and i don't know it's going to be very interesting to see what nvidia does so i think perhaps having more time in the tank but either way getting back to strict point i think it's going to be a very 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 cool series of processors i'm actually really excited for strict point um while i'm not much of a you know laptop gamer per se I feel that, um, you know, ultimately there is a lot to be said potentially for removing the need for low, low uh, performance discrete GPUs. Um, I mean, I'm not saying they shouldn't be sold necessarily because I think having them available, for example, if your old, you know, GPU explodes or something like that. But generally speaking, I think that uh, having an APU and just kind of cost reducing parts and just making things better in terms of battery life, etc., etc., I'm all for it. I mean, it could be very beneficial. It's going to be very interesting, though, to see how all of this shapes up. With that said, guys, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully, you've enjoyed it. Ap uh, apologies for no camera for this one. I'm finding a bit of a. Uh, a plague honestly and just a bit snuffly so i kind of figured you probably not want to see snot juice running down my nose for this video <laughs> but uh with that said take care of yourselves bye for now